Hello and welcome to GameSack. On September 23rd, 2021, ActRaiser Renaissance was announced during the Nintendo Direct broadcast. It was also mentioned that it's available right now. So I was like, super excited. I had to download it right away. I mean, it looks really colorful and it's 2D. What could go wrong? Well, I'll talk about that game in a few minutes. But first, let's take a quick look back at the original. ActRaiser was an incredible game when it came out in late 1991. It was a very early title for the still new Super Nintendo. And you know what? It's still an incredible game to play these days. You control a statue that's brought to life by an angel to rid the land of monsters. The control in these action segments is spot on. The game has its moments where the difficulty seems high, but if you die it's because you haven't learned that particular area or the enemy yet, never because of the controls. Make your way to the boss and defeat him to finish the stage. Then you're taken to the sim part of the game. This is a god game where you guide your people in building their town. You need to clear out areas with your divine powers to make room for them to build and expand. While this is happening, monsters keep spawning from various spots. You can fly around and shoot them as the angel with your little bow and arrow. Now, this all sounds really boring, but for some reason it is absolutely not. I really enjoy it. Eventually, the townspeople will seal these spots up and worship you. Praise be. Eventually, a massive hole will open and you'll have to go into a new area and finally rid the town of monsters forever. This is another side-scrolling action stage for you to play. Once you finish this, it's on to the next area where, again, you fight an action stage first. Then you do the town thing again. The graphics in this game are nice, especially for such an early title. It has great artwork and really nice scrolling. The music is something else. Everyone was talking about it when this game was released because it sounded like an orchestra and people could not believe the sound that was coming from a cartridge game. I mean, holy crap, it's an orchestra inside my Super Nintendo! The game's composer was Yuzo Koshiro, who was already known by gamers for Revenge of Shinobi and Streets of Rage 1 at the time. Oddly, his name wasn't on ActRaiser's title screen, so it was a while before I learned that he did the music. And I think everyone can agree that he did a great job. This is just an all-around amazing game, and I love playing the professional mode that unlocks after beating the game proper. This is a must in any Super Nintendo fan's collection. <laughs> great game that was. ActRaiser 2 would go on to remove the simulation mode and it would be, well, a slower game all around, but we don't really need to talk about that one in this episode. So let's dive right into ActRaiser Renaissance. ActRaiser Renaissance is available for the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, Steam, and I guess mobile devices too, but who cares. I picked up the Switch version because I thought it was an exclusive game since it was announced on the Nintendo Direct, so I proceeded to immediately download it. Please keep in mind that I am an absolute idiot. Soon I found that it was available on other platforms. Well that sucks for me, but the game doesn't have any polygons or anything complex like that, so the Switch shouldn't struggle, right? Yeah, I'll be talking about that soon. Anyway, I just couldn't help myself, I had to get it. This is a remake of the original game, but they added a lot of stuff. It starts out innocently enough in the Sky Castle, like the first game where you input your name and get ready to descend to the opening stage. Then you're on your way down getting ready to play some reimagined Act Razor in 1080p glory! Wait, these graphics are pre-rendered? Yeah, they're pre-rendered, just like Donkey Kong Country was on the Super NES. Not just the characters and enemies, but it looks like the backgrounds are as well. Wow, I haven't seen a game with pre-rendered graphics since, well, since the mid to late 90s anyway. What an interesting and odd choice. Probably not the best choice, as honestly the game looks kind of, well, like ass. It looks like ass, and not good ass. But of course, that's not where my frown ends, oh no. I immediately notice that the scrolling stutters all over the place. Are you telling me that the Nintendo Switch can't even scroll 2D graphics properly? I heard someone on Twitter say that it's a 2.5D game, but no, it's completely 2D. The fault obviously lies with a developer who is known as Sonic Powered. More like underpowered. 
It's very distracting, and honestly, it's just unacceptable in this day and age. Hell, this wasn't even acceptable back in the 16-bit era. Here we are, 30 years later, and they churn out a product that performs worse? I've heard that the version on Steam has similar stuttering issues with the scrolling, though I haven't been able to confirm that myself. The PlayStation 4 version is smoother, but still choppy. Yes, I bought it a second time just to check this out. It repeats every fifth frame, kind of like the Alex Kidd and Miracle World remake. The Switch version repeats every third frame or so in comparison. Playing the PS4 version on the PlayStation 5, it still repeats every fifth frame for the same juddery motion. But buried in the option screen is the environmental effects which you can disable. On the Switch, this brings the scrolling speed up to PlayStation 4 and 5 versions, exactly, which is 50 frames per second. Turning off the environmental effects on the PS4 or PS5 offers exactly no increase in the scrolling frame rate at all. According to my friend John Linneman over at Digital Foundry, the game is made in Unity and it's a camera issue that's super easy to fix. I just hope that they do it. Seriously, what the hell, people? Even in 4K, the graphics have some shimmering as they scroll as well. There are still things I like about the visuals, though. For instance, those clouds in the backgrounds here in this blood pool stage look frickin' fantastic! Very ominous, I love them. And the scrolling is a bit smoother in the following stages compared to the first one, so there's that, I guess. Oh, and the music is awesome! There are new arrangements, and you can select the original Super Nintendo music as well if you'd like. Yuzo Koshiro, of course, did all of the new arrangements himself. This isn't Act Razor Symphonic Suite, which was another arrangement he did back in the late 90s or so, though that would have been nice to have in here as well. Still, many of the arrangements are indeed symphonic. The Fillmore stage is now full of electric guitar, and you know what? It sounds awesome! There are some brand new music tracks in here as well, and those tracks have both the Super NES and the Renaissance music modes for you to listen to. That's right, even some new Super NES music. Alright, enough about the game's aesthetics and whatnot, let's get into the actual gameplay. As far as the gameplay goes, well, it has some potential, but they went overboard with a few things and changed some stuff around. The stage layouts are similar, but different compared to the original. Oh, okay, well, that's, that's fine. Swinging your sword doesn't feel as good, and the enemies no longer make the satisfying pop sound when you kill them, for lack of a better description. Also, when your dude is running, he hangs the sword down behind him. In the original game, he held that sword straight up like a badass. This guy here is not even strong enough to hold up his sword. What an idiot. The boss fights have similar attacks to the originals, but their patterns have changed. There are now two checkpoints during the action stages that you can physically see as you pass them, since they're on their own screen. During later stages, enemies drop crystals which you can collect to power up your attack and magic abilities. It's kind of fun to collect these, actually. This is one thing that I'm happy that they added, because yeah, I like it. The control isn't too bad, and I can't feel any lag, but it still just doesn't feel quite as nice as the original for whatever reason. I can't really tell you why, it's just not as good. The game's balance is inconsistent. The first stage is easy, but I struggled quite a bit with the first boss. He felt way overpowered for the stage that he was on. But I was able to beat the next two bosses on my first try with hardly any effort at all. This was on the normal difficulty. Contrast that to the original game where the balance was consistent throughout and just really well done. The biggest changes come to the sim mode. They added a lot more story and of course that comes with a lot more text. A lot. Each area has a protector with their own exciting personality. Yay! You still do the same stuff here, but now it takes a lot longer. And in the first area, you're constantly being bombarded with story, tips, and tutorials. And when I say constantly, I mean constantly. I usually just speed through them. Fortunately, this eases up quite a bit by the time you get to the second area. There's also a brand new tower defense minigame that you need to play. Often. These feel kind of annoying to me, mainly because you have to do it so many times. Tower Defense first invaded East games, and now Actraiser. Japan, please stop this nonsense, I beg you. Anyway, during these, you need to guide the town protector with a fun personality to attack the monsters while you zap the others with your magic, if you have enough SP, that is. In later areas, you can call the aforementioned protector to help the current area's protector and send them around to attack monsters in different parts of the map. I'll admit, this is kind of cool. 
I just wish they attacked faster. I've never been a huge fan of tower defense stuff. I've always just felt that it belongs on phones. That's just my opinion though. In the first area alone, I had to play the tower defense game at least five times. Then it's back to doing this and that for the people and it honestly feels like this sim mode part of the game is never gonna end. It drags on and on. When the townspeople seal a monster generator, you do get to go in and hack things up in a tiny area, and that's honestly a good idea, but it's not enough to make the extremely lengthy simulation segments worth it. We're talking about two hours, just in the first sim part. That, my friends, is overdoing it. It also kills replayability, because I don't want to sit through all this again. The original game had the perfect balance between action and sim. Not sure why they wanted to mess that up so badly. Fortunately, you can go back to the Sky Palace and save your game at any time. The scrolling can even get a little bit choppy on the sim portions if you're playing the Switch version, especially once you get your town built up. Surprisingly, it remains perfectly smooth on the PlayStation 4. I'm thinking the team that worked on the simulation mode wasn't the same team that worked on the side-scrolling action mode. Speaking of the scrolling, the parallax effect is just weird. I kind of like what they did with the light coming from behind the trees in this area, but the background layers don't scroll slowly enough compared to the foreground layer. It just looks kind of wonky. Look at this in the second stage. It looks even wonkier, if that's a word. Doesn't it just look like they weren't quite sure how to implement parallax? That's the feeling I get. Also, I'm not sure why this stage has the wrong music. It's playing the Fillmore first stage music when the original game played a tune called Marana. That's supposed to be this tune. Oh well. Still, with all of that said, I eventually did find myself enjoying the simulation mode. I especially like going into a brand new area and beginning all the terraforming for the people. It's just so fun. This is what I liked about the original. I even started to have some fun with the tower defense game. Still, if the tower defense segments could have been limited to about two or so per area, I think that would have been perfect. This game definitely grows on you, so it's not as bad as your first impression might be. I at least hope that they update the issue with the Unity camera so we can all get smoother scrolling, even on the Switch. Alright, so those are my thoughts on Act Razor Renaissance. Is it the best remake? No, of course not. But the more I played it, the more I did start to like it. And all the new music that Yuzo did is incredible, and the arrangements are just awesome as well. Can't believe I bought it twice though. Oh well, what do you think of Act Razor Renaissance? Let me know, and in the meantime, thank you for watching GameSack. My own's official, everyone. Alex Kidd in Miracle World and Act Razor both prove that the Sega Master System and the Super Nintendo are both way more powerful than the PlayStation 5. Now, the PlayStation 5 is supposedly the world's most powerful console in the history of ever. Now, you're probably asking, what's the joke? Well, my friends, the joke is the performance of the remakes of these two games. That's all I got.